Welcome to Business Series Episode 2. It's going to be a conversation about how to make a career out of parkour and ninja. Thanks for entertaining everybody. So I actually keep this handy dandy notebook to find clues that are left around in the gym. Not necessarily like blues clues, but just so I can keep track of what we're doing. We should do an episode of Blues Clues. <laughs> I'm ready for an episode of Blues Clues. Comment down below if you want us to reenact an episode of Blues Clues in the gym. I think that sounds fun. We'll probably do it anyway. I set this up a little differently than usual because I wanted it to be more like a conversational episode that we could actually throw up onto a, um, onto a, a podcast. So be fun. yeah, it'll be fun. I mean, obviously you guys are seeing it here on YouTube first because I love video editing and putting in all the cool shots that we've gotten before. Basically, we're gonna jump right into uh, the list of revenue streams. Um, i.e. like stunts, entertainment, coaching. What are the all of the ways that you can make a right, dime now, off of doing parkour or ninja? Now, are we just talking about making money or like, yeah, I, like substantially no, like no, 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 being no. able to support yourself? We'll get into like that later, okay. but I think what's so, important now is just like, even if you can make a dollar doing it, like... Definitely. So so he already mentioned... Busking. <laughs> yeah, he already mentioned the big ones. So you have the stunts, <laughs> entertainment of any kind, coaching, obviously owning a gym. Yeah. Um, being a competitive athlete yeah. uh, is another big one um, that we'll, we'll have to talk about later because there's a lot of misconceptions with that one. Um, clothing, parkour clothing is another big one. Yeah, sponsorships that is starting to become a thing now. Uh, and depending on where you live, like I said busking earlier as a joke, but that's a legit thing. <laughs> yeah. Like people who live like near Santa Monica and like go out to the pier, like you could stand there with a bucket. Yeah and do bucks for backflips, and I guarantee you could probably rake oh. in enough to buy a meal. Why didn't we do that when we were in Hawaii? We had like groups of yeah. people watch me bomb over that yeah, uh, that's railing true. that one day. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what the fine, like the legalities of it is, but you yeah, could stand true. on a street corner and do backflips, and hey, that's probably better than the homeless guy who's just standing there and getting your money. So. Disclaimer, panhandling is technically illegal in the US. So just be aware. <laughs> well, you've heard it first. So. Yeah, I think you do have to get some sort of license. You have to have a license. It's a performance license. And they're not hard to get. You just have to paperwork. Yeah. So in addition to those things, there's the stunt industry. Mm -hmm. um, if you get into the entertainment business, you can find a job through Cirque du Soleil because of your yeah. parkour skills or your massive upper body strength. Uh, I mean, take even like just for the Ninja Warrior side of things, um, you've got some really, really like top tier ninjas mm -hmm. who are just super popular because they've, they've hit it off really well on their social medias. Yeah. Like Jessie Graff, you know, she's, she's before that she's a ninja warrior, she's definitely a stunt girl. Yeah. And so that took off and you know, that set her through, you know, to her, her success. And uh, you've got Island Ninja who's just massive hype man. Like this guy can work a crowd like nobody's business. And uh, that just kind of spills out from you know his his moment that he spent on the the Ellen DeGeneres show. Is that you say? Oh, he was on the Ellen DeGeneres yeah, show. Yeah, he was on. I the didn't Ellen. even know that. Yeah, you can look All it right. up. Yeah, check it out. Because how much I watch TV. Yeah, but um, <laughs> he, he he got really popular because of how energetic and open and like just huge energy mm -hmm. he was. And so there's a bunch of different ways that you can like kind of navigate through the entertainment industry to make a make a dime off of parkour or ninja. Yeah. Um, and uh, everybody's a little bit different. Like I, I don't really consider myself to be. I'm, I'm believe it or not, an introvert. This is yeah. like through coaching and through these videos is my one way of like me bending the rules and like, you know, being an entertainer and an extrovert. So, um, it's it's anybody's game, but it's not going to be easy. I think yeah. first and foremost, like you can't just expect day one. Like I don't know about you, but when I first started parkour. And I, and I knew I loved it and I was doing like my first flips. My immediate goal was like, I'm gonna get a sponsorship and I'm gonna get so much money and I'm gonna fly around the world and I'm gonna wear Red Bull and it's gonna be so great and um, I don't have to work a day in my life. And that was my, my image of success. Do your research. <laughs> but that narrow, that narrow minded view of things made me so depressed because yeah. I was like, why don't I have a sponsorship? How come I only get one t-shirt a month from Red from Go Fast Energy Drink, which I was sponsored by for a minute. <laughs> I remember <laughs> talking about that, yeah. Yeah. So, um, I think it's important to keep in mind that you, if you have a narrow center, if you have like a real narrow view of what you want in your parkour or ninja career, 
it's best to keep your options open so that way you never know what direction yeah. you might end up going or find out what's working way better than others. If you had talked to me eight years ago, I never would have said, oh, you know, I'm going to make a living off of running a parkour gym. Like yeah. that's just, that never occurred to me. And you know, back then it was like, I wanted to be Jackie Chan. And so I was like beaten down doors just to do stunts. And lo and behold, the moment I stopped doing that, my life took a big turn and steered itself into uh, running a gym. And then actually that put my name on the map yeah. and I was able to get a ton more opportunities of uh, entertainment jobs, stunt jobs, just from the sheer fact that I was doing something that I was more successful at. Stunts in Colorado, like it kind of sucks, but it's not a viable option in Colorado. We're not a Hollywood state, if you may. No. Um, like if you want to be a stunt person, you want to be a valid stunt person. Oh yeah, you got to move to LA, you got to move to uh, Florida. There's yeah. tons of live events uh, that you could be a part of as a stunt performer or entertainer. You got to move to Vancouver. Those three places are real prime for those kinds of things. Go to yeah. cities that are big tourist hot spots. Oh yeah. And then you can actually make something that you might be able to pay rent with. Yeah, well, but even then, what a lot of people don't realize, especially parkour athletes, is stunts is not just flipping and jumping yeah. and that you have to be able to fight. So if you don't have any martial arts background or fighting background, you're instantly one step lower. If you don't know how to fall off of a 10, 20 foot building, oh, yeah. that's another step down. It's like you have to have parkour is such a small thing. So if you're going that route, guys, you better be ready to do everything. Mm -hmm. Just train train everything because there's no way you're going to make a living off of just doing parkour unless you happen to have this massive like Ferrang type following oh, like you yeah. see like Dom Tomasio or um, Pasha, Pasha oh, man, or Pasha. Jason Paul. Those guys have like huge social media followings so that puts them on the map. So even the jobs that are offered here in Colorado, like I know we've had jobs before where it was like, I, I think Kia like or some car company put out a, an ad or something like that for hey, we need parkour guys mm -hmm. for our video to vault over our cars and flip over buildings. Guess who they're gonna call first? Not not us, we're right in their backyard. Yeah. yeah, we can do a great job, we're gonna do amazing, but no, they're gonna call the guys out in LA first because that's what they do nine to five. Yeah. Like, they're gonna call Tempest. That's, so, uh, like I said, you gotta work your way up the ladder. It's really, really hard to reach that status. So in Colorado, scale of one to five, one. Oh, not yeah. saying you can't do it. But the scale of it's one to gonna five. be super hard. All right, we'll use that scale. So I like, I like one to five scales. <laughs> like stunts, not gonna lie, is the only way to make a lot of money. But even then, it's only in like but bursts. Yeah, it's like yeah. five percent of all people who are in stunts actually like make the bucks that everyone talks about. Sure. Um, so let, let's go. Five is viable okay. to survive. Five, five is viable. Okay. And like a three is you can afford ramen every week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you can't. You have to live with your parents at a three because yeah. you can't afford rent. Yeah, because <laughs> Colorado rent is ridiculous. So what about a, a parkour coach? Now, so I think I, I, that that's like a four, four and five because there are so many gyms in Colorado. Oh, yeah. It's nuts. Like Colorado um, Apex Movement was actually one of the first official parkour gyms yeah. in the U.S. And when I say official, it's because gymnastics gyms had their their parkour programs. But they were the fir one of the first gyms to be certified under insurance and under mm -hmm. um, like Google searches, oddly enough, that's like a viable thing mm -hmm. um, to be considered. So we've been stacking up. So I mean, it, just off the top of my head, there's seven, seven gyms, parkour ninja yeah, gyms that in are Colorado in Colorado alone. alone. Yeah. And I'm probably forgetting a couple. Oh, yeah. Um, that wasn't the case like four years ago. Oh, four no. years ago, if you asked us, you know, is it a viable choice to become a parkour coach and we would said no you better just go be a gymnastics coach exactly. that's your next best thing but at the same time it takes a special kind of person you can't just be a good athlete and be a good coach it doesn't work yeah, that way the coach um, comes before the athlete for sure like you need to be a good teacher before you're a good parkour coach mm -hmm. because just if you know how to do everything in your arsenal you might find out that you're the worst teacher ever and oh, yeah. <laughs> um, it doesn't mean you can't become one even if you're not good yeah. at it, it just kind of takes some time. You have to be willing to actually be told what you're doing wrong and you have to accept that you're not gonna be good at certain things. Yeah. Uh, like, like for example, the reason why I see it as such a viable or valid thing is because mm -hmm. I've been coaching for four years yeah. and it's been my primary income for three and a half years. Yeah. There, there has to be a passion behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know a couple of people who are coaches purely because they don't want to do anything else, but they hate coaching. Yeah. And 
no offense to them, they're some of the worst coaches I've ever seen, just because they look bored, and they're not excited, and when a kid learns how to front flip for the first time, they're like, cool, I've been able to do that for like six years. It's like, okay, he's six. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you have to get excited. What were you doing at six years old? Not yeah. flipping off of a box. More often than not, if you are really good at parkour, you're going to be presented with all these opportunities to teach parkour, and yeah, like it, this is, happens so often. Like you get so many people like teaching parkour who really shouldn't be teaching anything at all. Oh, yeah. And there, there, you got to take some, you know, the same type of growth that any sort of business should have, and that's you got to learn how to teach. You need to go, that maybe that's learning how to work with you know kids. Maybe it's doing some sort of daycare program. Maybe it's doing like learning how to coach gymnastics, how to coach tennis. Really, if you can coach anything then you can learn to coach anything well. Don't don't skip that, guys. <laughs> like, please don't. Um, even in the, the ninja community, there's so many opportunities. You've got these oh, gyms yeah. opening up left and right. The entire country has ninja gyms in every single state. You're gonna find people who have experience, and then you're gonna want to mentor underneath those people. What would you rate coaching? Coaching, so, for the average Joe, I, I'm gonna go like 3.5. 3.5. Four, four. You might need a second job, but you can get most of what you need from.